with Classroom Screen? Say less. I got you. It's actually really simple. Classroom Screen is a tool that I think should be in every teacher's back pocket, and I know that school is starting up very soon. So we're going to take a look at the website today. I did not pull it up before I started recording this video, and we're going to see what they have going on that's new. One of the things I love about this website is how user-friendly it is, but I do know that reading through something and having the time to take through to figure it out, those are things that we just don't always have time for. So let's look it over today. And those of you who are visual learners, hopefully this will be a help to you. So I noticed that there are some new templates that are available here in the library. And so this is the part that we're gonna focus on for today's video. As we come in here, you can see that there are some different categories available for classroom management, some different games, some different subject matter. They also have it so that you can search by age group, and I love that. I thought today that we would start off with the welcome screen that they have, and it gives me an overview of that, and it gives me the opportunity to try this template out. So let's see what it looks like. So I click on to use the template, I don't have a workspace prepared, so I'm just gonna use the one that comes up. And then this is what the screen would look like. Now, some of you are gonna go into your classroom in the fall and you're gonna find some sort of interactive board in there. And this is a perfect website to be able to use when you don't really have a lot of time to figure stuff out, but you want to use the technology that's been provided for you. This is a great opportunity for that. I'm clicking around in the widgets down below just to see if there's anything new showing up that I'm seeing. And I did not take a lot of time down there for this one. But I'm looking to see what's available and to see how I can customize this to fix the need for my own classroom or for your classroom. Now you'll notice over here on the left side, they have a section that shows the students what they need for that day. And they've added stickers to it. So I decided in my mind, this was a board for a young classroom. So I'm thinking that they might need their crayons. And so I went over down into the widget section, clicked on that, clicked on stickers. And then I'm just looking to see what new options they have for stickers right now. They have added to it. They don't have a ton yet, but I will say they keep updating this site. Every time I open it, there's something new and I love that. So you can see I'm just scrolling through to see what's available. These don't have color and I don't know if they can be colored or not. That's not something I've checked out yet. So they have some game pieces. And I decided that for my group of students, I don't want to have them grab a notebook. Let's say that this is for an activity where I have a sheet for them and we're gonna practice using our scissors today. So I'm gonna delete that notebook, and to delete it, you just click on any of the items that are on there, and then there is a little toolbar that'll pop up, and you can click on the trash can to delete it. So I added a sticker for scissors, and then I'm gonna look for glue. Now glue here, I ended up clicking on twice, so you'll see that I ended up with an extra one over on the left, and that'll show up here in just a moment. It took a minute for it to generate, so I didn't realize that it was there when I dragged this one down. Ended up with an extra one. Again, you just click on your picture and then hit the trash can and it'll delete it for you. And then I adjusted these by dragging them down. I could grab onto those little circle handles in the corners of those pictures and adjust the size of them if I wanted to. For the sake of right now, I kept it very simple. So now we're going on to the task list in the middle of the screen. And when I click on it, you'll see that there's that toolbar that comes up and I clicked on the little gear, and that gives me the opportunity to make some adjustments to this. So I can change the title of it, but I kept it the same. And then you'll see that they have the activities listed, and I was going in and just renaming them based off of what was there. And then this is where my summer teacher brain got stuck because I could not think of any subjects that were actually supposed to teach children. So you'll see that I kind of um, goof around with, with changing the names of the things that they're doing for that day. I don't know. I don't teach this, this age group. And so I was really having a hard time thinking about what this age group would be learning. I know it's more than crafts, snacks, and recess. Um, they do a little bit more than that. So I think I add reading here at the end. There we go. And then, you know, you can customize the length of time and all of that. You can add activities. You can add a break in there. 
And then if you want to change the picture that shows up next to it, over here on the right side, you can click on the picture next to it and it'll let you go into their library of graphics that they have. And then you can type in whatever word you can think up and it'll show you anything that they have that's close to that category. And it'll auto automatically change it for you. There are a couple different types of to-do lists that you can do and you can change it in that screen I just went out of. So here they have a couple other widgets turned on. They have one for a 15 minute timer and then they have this one for the clock. And when you click on these by hitting the gear again, if you make them active and then click on that gear, you can make adjustments to them. I kept this one pretty simple and then I expanded it so that it filled the screen by hitting that button up in the top right corner. And this is what it would look like on the screen. This would be able to be used with an interactive board, a smart board, whatever type of board that you have. You could also use this on an iPad or a computer and connect it to your screen as well. It just wouldn't have the touch screen abilities at the front, but if your device is touch screen, you could touch it there. Now I went back to the main screen to see some of these others that they had created. I used to play Boggle when I was young and I don't think I've played it since then which was back in the 80s, so it's been a while. So it took me a, a minute to remember how to do this, but they have some instructions there, which is very helpful. They do have a two minute timer that was set that they used with the widget that's available down in the bottom. And I do have a video from a, a several months ago where I showed how to input widgets. And I can do some more of those videos as well about the different widgets at some point. So I was playing around with this. There is that drawing feature down there. At the bottom of the screen, you can see me clicking on either the squiggly line or on that arrow, and that changes if you're able to write or if you're able to point, click, drag, whatever. Down in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that it says one out of six, two out of six, three out of six. That tells me that I have more screens that I can scroll through. And so they had some different boards that they had created. And then the very last board that they had here, they had a note for the teacher, for the user, as you're preparing this for your class. And here they gave you uh, the whole alphabet and you can make your own boards. And so what I would do for this is I would duplicate this board and then I could, you know, have it set up for myself however I wanted that to be. So that was the Boggle one. I really liked that. I think that they did a great job on that one. And then you'll see that there is one for Fast Finishers. I'm going to check this one out. And while I'm doing this, I do want to mention there was one listed in there that was um, students against teacher. I don't remember the exact name for it. It was not working for me. Every time I tried to open it, it just closed itself and it wasn't saving anything. So I think they, they have a glitch that they need to work out on that one. And I would highly recommend that you test these out before you plan to actually use them in class. Even if it's just taking a couple minutes to just click around like I'm doing in this video. So here the purpose is to let the students be able to go up to the board and choose something to do. <laughs> you can hear that it, the volume is on for that. And so they click that randomizer button. When I clicked on it, I wanted to see how they set this up. So I clicked on that section and you'll see that gear pop up. And so I clicked on that. And it looks like instead of creating a roster, they added these symbols in there for themselves. So that's what's generating whenever they hit the randomizer, which I thought was pretty clever. So here that student gets to help the teacher. You can take that off. It, it gives you that tip there of how to change those. You just click on the text and you can rechange it. Maybe you're not available to let them help you. And so maybe you want that to be something else. And that's just a screen that if you have the paid version of this, you could save and have available anytime you want to make that available for your students. So here was an applause meter. I thought this one would be fun to check out. I have used the widget that has this sound scale on it. You do have to make sure that your permissions are set so that your microphone can be used. This one's very simple, but effective. So the intention for this one, I think, is after somebody, you know, presents or does whatever, you can see how well of a response they get. Now, the settings for this, you can adjust how loud you, you're allowing them to be before the bell or the little alarm goes off. 
You can also turn on and off the microphone here and you'll see me click on those here in a moment. Yes, there I just turned off the microphone with that slash in there. Here I just turned off the alarm so that it wouldn't ding when they got to the appropriate point. This is a widget as well. So I click on it, it gives me the gear and you can always go in and make adjustments to this. This is letting me choose my microphone. I can choose the sound that plays whenever they get to that certain level. And I thought this was pretty neat as well. This is a fun one to have to be able to use whenever. All right, back to the templates. I found the this game section and in this game section, there is a build a scarecrow and it's almost fall. So I thought that I would try that one out. This is like Hangman. And I could see this being something that we use, especially with, you know, maybe we have some vocabulary words that we're working on. This would be a great opportunity for that. Or maybe we're just reviewing a, a topic that we've learned. Now here I'm showing you when you go into your dashboard, it lets you see the screens that you've built if you have the paid version. Now I'm not sponsored by Classroom Screen in any way, shape or form. I do pay for the paid version. It's about $30 for the full year. And as a teacher, I just truly think it's worth it. It's a great resource and it's a great way to be able to use interactivity in the classroom. So because of that, I'm able to save these, which is very handy. So I went in and I saved it and then I just duplicated the slides and then I can go in here and turn on my pen and I can draw the lines we're used to seeing whenever we do hangman. And so then I could either do this part myself or I could have a student come up to the board, change it to orange to match the fall theme. So let's say that the students guessed the letter T. So I'm gonna cross that off and fill in the blank where it's at. Let's say that they pick a letter that is not in the word. So they pick B, that is not there. So then they're gonna switch back from the pen and go over and make it the arrow so that they can drag things. And so I don't know why I picked the pole first, but that's the one I did. All right, so then they picked the letter H. So we're looking pretty good. And I can cross that off the list. And then I. Now I'm writing all this with my mouse. So please, please be kind about my handwriting. All right, so they picked the letter P. The P is not up there. So we're going to drag the shirt over. And you could have a student be responsible for, you know, bringing these items over as you're working through it. Now down at the bottom, I decided to stop playing around with that because that'll take forever, but I can scroll through, you know, one to the next slide to the next slide and, you know, draw the lines on there. And I could have that preset before I go to class. So I'm not wasting class time. Now in my dashboard, I can name these different categories for this collection. So here I have fall hangman. They had a snowman hangman there, and then you can make your own. So I was thinking it'd be fun to do maybe a football theme. I know football season's about to start and I am from the state of Texas and high school football is king. And so I could see football being a very popular design for that. I did play around with this other game that you can see down there. I just didn't keep it in the video. It was pretty interesting. You roll the die, you see how many numbers you have there and then you go around and high five that many of your classmates. Kind of an icebreaker. It was a fun activity. And then, you know, I can go through and change all that. I don't know that you'll have these opportunities if you're using the free version, but this is something that I do have access to. I love Classroom Screen. The pricing again, I thought I would click on to just show you. I think that for a full year, I don't think that $30 is a big deal. Um, I love that they're constantly updating and... I don't know that I'll ever start stop promoting them. I just really like their product and I love how, how relevant their resources are and I love how often they're updated. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any other questions or things you're not sure about with Classroom Screen or with any other EdTech software, please let me know. I'll be glad to help you out with that. 
This is Tina with Simple Tech Media. We appreciate your support and we hope that this was a help to you. Thank <laughs> you.